Sexy People Podcast of Dan Frigolette. I'm joined with Boston Jock. Thank you for being here. Hey, thanks for having me. Uh, I know it from a uh, from a small bird that your name happens to be Ken. Is it all right if I call you Ken? Yeah, absolutely. Can I have your stats? I've never asked anybody to do this actually. Um, how tall are you? Uh, so I'm five foot seven. I'm 180 pounds. Uh, 185 on a good day. And length, girth? No. <laughs> um, 51 inches at the shoulder, 43 inches at the chest, six inches ish, and kind of thick. I mean, what? <laughs> Fine. Um, the uh, so wait, I, I know that I know that you're that that uh, you're taking some time out here for uh, before you go to the gym. So I appreciate that. Um, what what is your gym regimen right now? Well, uh, so I work out six or seven days a week. It just kind of depends. Um, I spend my Saturday nights at a club. So if I go really hard on Saturday night and get home at like eleven a.m. on Sunday morning, then I generally don't go to the gym on Sunday. Um, but as long as I'm home right. by like. 8 or 9 a.m., I'll take a quick nap, and then I'll go to the gym on Sunday. Um, do, like, a light, full-body circuit, and then call it a day. Um, but I work out um, solidly six days a week, do kind of a, a rotation. Um, right now, I'm seeing a trainer, so I see him Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday. Um, and, uh, yeah. Well, you're fit. What's the what's the virtue of the trainer? Just somebody to yell at you? What do you, what do you like about the trainer? So, I... I am, I, well, I, I dropped my certifications, but I was a certified personal trainer as well. Um, I, so when I started bodybuilding, I started at 110 pounds. I got myself from 110 wow. to 180 and then I plateaued. Um, I've hit a point where I, I like I've, I've gotten to 190, but that's, that was a, like a couple of weeks. Um, and I haven't, wasn't able yeah. to get myself past that. So I've started seeing a personal trainer. Um, he's a pro bodybuilder. He's competed at the Olympia level. So the idea is that, you know, that's the right kind of person to kind of shift my routine and, and help me get yeah. uh, to my goal, which is two, 220 pounds. 220. That's a different guy. Yeah, I want to put, I, I want to put another 40 pounds on this frame. It's literally two of me from when I started. How do you come up with that number? Like what's the. No, that, that was how I came up with this. I wanted to double my body weight. <laughs> I just wanted to double you. I see. I just want to be me again. Yep. Interesting. Well, so then what is it? I mean, you spent yes. a lot of time being naked. What does that do um, to comparative analysis with, the, like, visually? Do you find that do you find that the the fitter you get, uh, um, the better your dick looks, or how does it how does it usually go? Um. Well, I mean, it definitely does look better with, you know, more frame around it. But uh, so I've got I've got some fairly bad body dysmorphia. Um, I don't actually see the change. I still see myself the same way I saw I myself at 110 pounds. Um, the difference is that the bigger that I get and the more muscular I get, the more other people comment on it and the more other people like it. And that reinforces for me that there's a change, even if I don't see it. Um, Interesting. So. Interesting. So with the body dysmorphia and people saying things to you, you like it, but do you believe it? Um, so I believe that other people see something that I don't and that's, and that's yeah. really actually the benefit to me. And that's the, I, I, it is, it is motivating for me that, that what I'm seeing isn't necessarily real. It, I mean, it's real to me, but it's not right. A reflection of reality so it's so you know when people tell me hey you're looking a lot bigger than you know than than you were a couple months ago like that's that tells me that there's change it tells me there's progress um because i don't see the progress yeah. so it's if somebody else is telling me and enough other people are telling me then i can gauge my progress off of that so do you think that uh when you get to your goal weight you're going to like like feel that and like absorb it yeah, I mean, I, I, I think, and we won't know until we get there, but I think that at the point that I'm double my initial weight, I won't be able to logically deny that there's a change there, that there's like, yeah. you know, I, logic dictates that at 180 pounds, I can't argue that there's 70 pounds more of me than there was when I started. But, you know, I think like at, at double my body weight, I have to see something. So. And what's that timeline? 110 to 180. Idea. What was that timeline? 
Yeah. So that was that was over the course of um, 2010 to basically 2021. Um, part of that is I was in the Navy when I started. Um, I got out of the Navy in 2019. So the first nine years of that, I was doing deployments. I was working, you know, ridiculous hours. So that was a very slow progression. Um, and then, you know, obviously 2020 with so COVID, so the gyms shut down and all doing. of that. It's very hard to, um, you can't eat enough. I you see. can't work out enough. You you know, all, all that stuff. So it's, it all kind of gets in the way and, and slows the progress down. So, um, it's been 12 years, but there's a lot of stuff in there that happened that, that inhibited progress or made, made the progress harder. So, yeah. But I don't think putting um, 70 pounds on is, is um, a small feat for anyone. So, <laughs> no, but, it's not. So I, do you see or talk to anybody about the body dysmorphia? Like, I don't, I don't know for, for people that, aren't, that can't grasp it, just the idea that what you see in the mirror doesn't match what other people's outward progression is. How do you, like, discuss it with yourself? How do you deal with it i mean this is an extreme solution right doubling in size um but then you know yeah. and my fear and, and people fear for stuff like that is always that like what if i get to my goal and i don't i still don't see anything and then how do i deal with it then and is there some way to mitigate that is there and is ta does talking help yeah so um I'm not a big talker. Uh, I've tried therapy in the past for different reasons, um, and I've, I've no disrespect to anybody in the profession. Um, I find it to be useless. Um, I know plenty of people that l love talking to their therapists. I don't, I don't see a purpose of it. Uh, my therapist is a circular weight, about 45 pounds, and I pick it up and I put it back down again. Um, <laughs> I, uh, my, my method of, of coping with it, um, probably not the healthiest, was to start an OnlyFans. Um, well, I started yeah. Naughty Twitter, and then I went into OnlyFans and Just for Fans and, and that kind of stuff. Um, so my, I mean, my coping mechanism is, is basically sex work, content creating. Um, you know, yeah. people like it. People see it. People comment on it. Um, I get noticed in clubs. I, I, mean, I went to London, and in the middle of a nightclub in London, someone yells, It's Boston Jock! Um, so, so like right. for me, the coping mechanism is that I have to acknowledge other people see something that I don't, um, and I'm okay with that. Yeah. I can, I can internalize that and say, you know, look, when I, when I look in the mirror, that's not a, ref that is a reflection of what's going on in my head. That's not a ref reflection of reality. Um, and so, you know, I, I, I can, can take that, I can internalize it and acknowledge that, that other people are seeing what I'm not. So. Yeah. Interesting. Interesting. I don't, um, yeah, it's hard. It's hard when, when we're, we're pushed with stuff like this to like try to intellectualize it. Um, it is interesting your, your perspective on therapy. My perspective is I've been in therapy and I've I identified some things and I still can't do anything about those things to stop me from sure. doing the shitty behavior. <laughs> um, so but um, yeah, so I don't, I don't, I don't have the answer. Um, so I was, that's why I wanted to ask what, what your thoughts would be. But so, a lot of things I want to ask you. Let's okay. let's start with you're talking about the club. This is a this is a an, uh, part of the occupation, or this is this is just blown off steam. A little of both. Um, I really really like you know like heavy bass music. Uh, I've started getting into um, house and and circuit, you know that kind of stuff in the last couple of years. Um, so it started as kind of a, just a, a way for me to satisfy that, you know, go find a subwoofer and stand in front of it, let it shake me. Um, but it's also a really good advertising tool. Like, you know, we're, um, this, oh, this, set, so, I didn't think you were going to say that. So, so this Saturday, the, the club that I normally go to is having an underwear party. Um, the, it's part of a, a normal circuit event that comes through town. Um, and so I'm, I'm going to go in a jock strap and a harness and I'm going to, wiggle my jiggly bits in front of a bunch of people for, you know, a few hours. Um, and inevitably someone, you know, basically every weekend, somebody comes up like, Oh, Hey, who are you? you know, my name's such and such, who are you? And, you know, we talk for a little while and they're like, Oh, can I, you know, can I get your, your Instagram or your Twitter? I'm like, yeah, absolutely here. You know, Boston, and they're like, wait, you make content. 
oh, very cool. And so, like, you know, we get into that that topic of conversation. Um, and, uh, you know, I was in Atlanta last weekend, did exactly that, went to the club, gave out, you know, my Twitter and my Instagram probably a dozen or, or more times. And, you know, so that's a dozen or more followers that I didn't have before I went out that night. Um, and out of yeah. that, I might get a subscriber or two or, or, you know, at a very minimum, like I got invited to an after party and then at the after party, I gave it out, you know, gave my contact info out another dozen times. And so like that kind of pools and now, you know, I'm up, you know, 40 followers that I didn't have, you know, the, the sure. day before. So I have a weird question because I find, uh, this is sure. the thing that's kind a of weird answer plaguing the dating site kind of world where somebody will put their content on a dating site and i think that upsets people so to the to almost to the extent where it's like oh is it false advertising like you're on tinder and you're trying to pump your content is do people feel that it's the same kind of thing where i mean you're at the club you're not necessarily advertising yourself as a single person but do people get disappointed uh, or do they think that it's um not fraudulent but kind of I guess do they get disappointed when they find out that you have a page and maybe that's like the goal of the hang and not that you're like there looking for ass. So um, generally, I would say no. Generally, people actually are very receptive to the fact that I make content, um, and you know, because in a lot of ways, it's like, hey, look, here's here's what it's like with me in bed. Um, in case you were curious. Right. Um, but right. but there you know there there are people obviously that you know their their interest in me and their interest in coming up to me was you know trying to take me home, um, and that's not out of the question by the way that's perfectly on the table. Okay. Um, right. It's just I'm very particular in who I in who I sleep with um, on and off camera. Yeah. So it's you know there are people that that will just you know just like with with somebody who doesn't create content there were people who come up to you and you know want to try and take you home and you're like yeah no sorry. Um, and then there's right. other people that, right. you know, I'm like, all right, let's, um, I mean, there's a dark room over there. You want to like, <laughs> I'm not beyond that. So, yeah, yeah. Um, that's a good answer. I like, I like that. I do like that, 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 that responds to the, to the nature. Um, so you were in the Navy, you said for a decade, is that, did I do that math right? Six, 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 16 And then years. when you're in, when you're in the Navy, Sorry, uh, the lag got me there. Sorry, um, uh, you were in the six, Navy how long? Sixteen years. Sixteen years. Wow. Sixteen. Um, yeah. Sixteen. Um, and while you're in the Navy, are you are you out personally? No, I was not. Um, the I was very you, very much in my closet up until the last like two years. Um, the last couple of years I came out, that was the biggest mistake that I ever made. Um, I don't, I don't recommend it to people. Some people I know are very happy with that decision. Um, it was probably the worst decision I made in my career. You came out in the military and it didn't go good. Correct. Okay. What, um, what was the immediate, um, like, disappointing response that you didn't anticipate it so i came out well after don't ask don't tell was repealed um i came out on a vessel where i thought that everybody was fairly open and accepting um and i should have trusted my instincts on it um, but i very quickly faced some aggressive homophobia um, i was one of the senior most people at the in, at in that on that vessel and um, very, very aggressive homophobia from the, from the lowest levels of the chain of command um, and the, people, the, the few people that were above me. Um, people that I right. thought were you know, open or at least would be respectful um, were not at all. So it was, uh, it was very disappointing the way that, that people decided to handle that. Interesting. Um... Can you, how do I ask this for, for as a, as a civilian, uh, can you use your status and your hierarchy, uh, to your advantage to squash that kind of like behavior or remark? I tried very, very aggressively to do that. Um, 
And unfortunately, with the military, when you don't have the support of the people above you, you lose. Um, and I tried jumping over them, uh, and I got, I got squashed. So, um, yeah, I, I chose to separate from the military and not have that be a part of my life anymore. Um, and honestly, the best wow. decision that I made. <laughs> so, uh, it worked that, out. The grass that process is in fact was greener on the other side. And that process two was two years? Yep. So it was two years of, of, of donkey do. Yes. Yes. It was, it was Judgment very much and, two years and of, not of good stuff. extreme unpleasantness in my life. Yep. Wow. So you say the grass is greener. It's a good decision. But uh, prior to that, obviously being out is, is the, the, the larger uh, goal and the, and the better position to be in from a life perspective. Um, but before that, uh, had you anticipated making the Navy be your lifelong career? No, I had always, I had always intended to do 20 years and then separate at the end of 20. Um, cause that's, you get a retirement, you, you know, there's a pension after 20. Um, that would have, you know, it's not a big pension. It's not what people try and make it out to be. Um, but it would have been, you know, enough to pay a mortgage and, and all that. Um, you know, so I, I think, uh, if I remember correctly, my pension would have ended up being somewhere right around $23,000 a year. Um, and so, you know, the decision to get out at 16 years was not a insignificant financial decision, but it was, it was well worth it. And I have zero regrets. <laughs> I will, I do not miss that. Yeah. Okay. I know you said uh, previously on on another podcast the um, that there was um, homosexual behavior on boats. You know, when you when you get a bunch of guys together and they're at sea or they're unable to sort of go out and socialize, that kind of stuff happens. Um, I don't know. The way it was described in 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 another interview kind of felt more like jail rules than like people having tendencies. Which one do you think it it, it is? I guess is the question. Yes, um, there were a hundred percent were people that that were there just trying to you know get their rocks off. Um, I know personally several people who are very heterosexual, very um, you know, very into their, their, um, you know, heterosexual relationships that, you know, women are all they're interested in. But after, you know, a couple of months at sea where, you know, 60, 70 days, you're around a bunch of guys and the only thing you have is a stack of porn and that porn gets bored after a while. Um, it gets boring after a while. You get a little bit more adventurous or a little bit more desperate to find a way to release. And, um, I, I know some people that, you know, chose the option of, you know, a mouth's a mouth or, you know, a hole's a hole. And, you know, maybe I don't pay attention to what it's connected to. Um, and, uh, you know, so they maybe not, maybe they, you know, will never go that direction again. Maybe they never, you know, intended to go that direction. Um, but, you know, desperation puts people into interesting moods and interesting um, willingness levels to explore things. Yes. Yeah, so so you, know. you said that you weren't out during that time. So did you feel like that's who you were? That you were the guy who just needed to bust in a mouth? Oh, no. I was the guy who was terrified to even approach that method. Um, I, I, never, I never messed around on the boat. Um, because I knew that I was gay, because I knew that, um, so I, I have some friends that actually did jail time because under Don't Ask, Don't Tell, if you were discovered to be a homosexual, if you were, especially if it, it was on a military base or involving a military vessel, um, they could absolutely throw you in prison. And I know people that did brig time, uh, and did jail time because they were found, um, having sex on a, on the base, not on the, not on the vessel, not on anywhere that like they were on the, just because they were on the base, um, they were put in jail for homosexual behavior because we all had to sign a paper that said we acknowledged we were not homosexual and would not engage in homosexual activities. 
Um, it's a page in my service record. So I have I have friends that did jail time, um, and and as a result, uh, I was petrified of anybody even suspecting that I was gay. Um, there are people that I served with for years that I considered very close friends when I was you know serving with them, who had no idea until um, you know 2019 2020 when I got out of the Navy and then you know announced that I had a fiance and that I was you know you know that I'm that I'm gay. And, uh, and that was where yeah. someone were like, wait, 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 hold on. You're gay. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Yeah. I am. <laughs> uh, so yeah, I never get engaged. So in interesting. Homophobia uh, is so like hilarious and awful simultaneously because it's so, it's just so ignorant. It's that, that there would be a law or a rule or a piece of paper is mind blowing. So I misunderstood then. So yep. I, I guess my question was more about your own self understanding while you're in the Navy. You you were aware that you were gay. This was not a thing that you were denying about yourself. Yes. This was just something that you did not want to be out in the in public. And as a result, yep. um, people are having um, hetero questioning possibly gay sexual experiences that you don't want to be involved in because you're authentic and that could fuck it up for the rest of your career. That's, that's wild. Yes. Yep. Yeah. I, um, I knew of that, stuff going on. Wild. I knew people yeah. that were, that were doing it and I could not bring myself to be a part of it because, you know, if somebody actually suspected that I was actually gay and not just experimenting or not just, you know, trying to bust a nut, um, I was, I was petrified of the results. What a weird psychology that like, you're worried that, um, <laughs> right. You'd hook up with somebody and be so good at it. And so impassioned about it that they would know that it was authentic. Um, and that's, yeah, that's scary. That's so scary. Um, I'm sorry that you had to deal with that. That is that that's such it's like a weird purgatory in a way, right? Because mm. there's like, you have all these relationships, things are going on, but you can't partake because of all of the factors. Yep. Um, that's wild. So, um, so you had no, you had no experience in the military where you were just out and and everything went smooth. It was immediate turmoil. And then figuring out why did it take two years to leave and when did you decide to leave? And then how does that even work? Can you decide to leave or do they have to decide for you kind of thing? So you, you've got a, you've got really kind of two options. The first is you wait until the end of your contract, which is what I did. Um, cause we're contracted for a set period of time. And then, you know, a lot of people reenlist and extend that, you know, that contract gets, gets extended out. Um, the other direction is that they can choose to separate you for some cause. Um, you know, so they can, um, decide that, you know, you, if you broke a rule, if you did something egregious enough, they can kick you out. Um, so, you know, my, my choice to separate was that at the end of my contract, I would not be extending. Um, I would not be moving forward with my military career. And that's that in and of itself creates problems because people figure that out about a year or, you know, a year out when you don't put it, submit your paperwork to reenlist and you don't, you know, um, express any interest in, you know, what your next orders are going to be, what oh. your next duty station is. Um, you know, yeah, so, how gnarly. So for a year where you would be asking the, the promotional questions, you just don't, and people start to understand what's going on. Interesting. Yeah. And I, I didn't hide it, right? At that point, we were a year into me being the target of some very aggressive homophobic behavior. So I was very clear about the fact that I would not be staying and I would not be extending. There was no question. There was no negotiation. I was getting out. And, um, you know, that was received poorly. So on top of everything else that was going on, that was, that was a, an undercurrent of, you know, well, I'm not staying in anyway. So why would they, why would they put in any effort to, to temper their behavior? I see. So because you're not staying, they, they, it was more licensed for them to act shitty. You're saying? Yes. Be because there's less consequences moving forward because you can't block their career. Because right. I'm not staying in. So there's nothing that I can do you know, to either block their careers or to, 
you know, make life difficult down line, um, I wouldn't, you know, I, I was not going to be advancing any, there was no chance that they were going to work for me in the future. Um, so there was yeah. no reason for them to, you know, behave in, you know, they had to keep it below the point where they could get it, you know, get in egregious trouble for it. But as long as they weren't doing anything, you know, as long as nobody took me and beat me out back, which is a little hard to do because I'm, you know, not a small guy, um, you know, they, they weren't going to get in trouble for anything. So, um, they, they had some very, so I guess that was going to be my question as far as staying out of trouble. So you're not getting beat on, you're not, you're not getting jumped, nothing like that. It's just, it's comments, it's shitty behavior, it's general attitude. It's now you have an understanding where it's coming from, that it's coming from hatred and bigotry. And it's just, and it just hangs there for a year, two years. Yep. Yep. And the, the people that I worked for would do nothing about it. Um, the, the people that I worked for that were also acting in, in this way were, you know, they would assign me extra work to do. They would, you know, when we would normally help each other because there's, you know, so much work. And, you know, if we're in a situation where I'm overloaded, usually somebody would pitch in and, and help take us, take up some of the slack. Um, they were aggressively not doing that, but, you know, they would, they would make a point of rather than helping, they would, you know, take the, the route of, you know, trying to counsel me or get me in trouble because I wasn't doing all of the work, even though like ah. the way that the, the system was set up is that we would, you know, people at the same level would share workloads when one person became, you know, right. unduly loaded up. Um, and so they, you know, they chose the, the path of just, just hammer me from all directions um, and not in the good way. Yeah. It's like office politics at its worst. Yeah. Not in the good way. The, um, yeah. Uh, I lost track of what I was going to say. Um, the, so what was, what kind of vessel were you on and what was your role? Uh, so I was on submarines. Uh, I was on, sub, I was on four different fast attack submarines. Um, the, the, my job the initially nuclear, was operation um, of the nuclear reactors. Thing? Okay. Nice. Yep. Uh, nuclear powered submarines. My, my job was actually operating the reactor. Um, and then for the last 10 years of my career, my job was supervising the operation of the reactor and running um, the department that was associated, that was responsible for the reactor plant operations. Um, so I'm a nuclear engineer by background. Um, oh, shit. So. That was, and that was something that the military trained you to do? Yes. Yep. Yeah. All my, all my and training are you, was, are you was using that now? Sort of. Um, so I'm an operations trainer at the electric utility company. Um, I, so I'm leveraging the engineering and the electrical side of it. Um, I am, my primary role is, is adult education. So I, I teach people, I train people in a highly technical, uh, field. Um, so I leverage, you know, part of that experience for it. Okay. Um, all right. So we, we've, we've alluded to a couple different things, um, from the content creation to the, um, to hooking up and, and some of this stuff. Where, what do you, as a sex worker, what's your first, um, like bullet content creator? Yeah. 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 And then I know you've, um, you've, 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 you do, you'll do, um, you'll do private parties. You'll do things like that. Um, do you consider that part of the same role? No. Well, yes and no. Um, I mean, it's all kind of under the same umbrella, but you know, yeah, obviously my, yeah. like my first focus and, and my primary is the content creation. Um, but I do, you know, as a result of that, I get asked to do things like private parties or escorting or that kind of stuff. Um, and so, okay. so it, it's kind of a result of the content creation. Um, but yeah, I do, like I do bachelor yeah. parties. I've, I've gone in, you know, um, I've done a couple of really fun bachelor parties. I, I typically stay away from anything that's like one-on-one, -on -one. Um, mostly because the people that approach me to do that are looking for like the dollar store version and I'm not the dollar store kind of guy. <laughs> um, ex explain that. Um, so for example, I, I actually got a, a message on Twitter the other day that was someone, you know, asking me to go and, and, um, you know, spend a couple hours with them. Um, we did not get to the details of what they were expecting, but we can all guess. Um, 
and they were like, you know, well, I'll, I'll pay you, you know, 50 bucks to come over and, you know, spend a couple hours with me. Well, um, no, uh, <laughs> um, I, you know, I, not to sound pretentious, but my day job pays me very well. I don't do this because I am, you know, trying to put food on the table. Uh, I don't make enough money off of the OnlyFans and, you know, the, the go-go dancing to like pay the bills. I have a day job. Um, yeah. You know, and, and, you know, so my time is like, I, you know, my time is valuable. Um, it's, I'm, I'm not, you know, I'm not doing would you you know, want 20 it? bucks an yeah, hour. Would you... <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, so then, so then that, that, to that, that, that brings a couple questions. Would you want to one? And then two, what would, what would the right price be? So that, I mean, the, the, the right price always is going to, you know, be dependent on what is expected and, you know, what the arrangement yeah. is. Um, I've been offered some, yeah. I've, I've been given some very generous offers to go fly somewhere. Um, I had a, I had an offer that the gentleman wanted to fly me to another city, um, had me spend the weekend with him. He was paying for all the travel, the, um, the, you know, the financial aspect of it was, was quite generous. Um, basically yeah. equated to one of my paychecks for the weekend. Um, and yeah. you know, I get paid every two weeks. He was going to pay me about the same amount that I would yeah. take home from that. Um, very generous, you know, I totally would be on board with that. Um, you know, I'm, I'm not selling my booty hole for 50 bucks. It's not going to happen. <laughs> you know, yeah. so it's, well, what if you, um, if you did that trip, is there it's, an expectation a, that you have to have sex? So, you know, that kind of, we never got to that discussion point. Um, we get to the part yeah. where, you know, I wanted to know what his expectation would be. And I was trying to verify that I'm not yeah. flying out to meet someone who's going to murder me. And, uh, he cut off communications at that point. So, um, I may have dodged getting the murdered. $50 I don't guy. know. But the, but... Maybe I'll never know. Yeah. No, that was, oh. the, that was the, the very generous Wait. guy. Um, when I got, oh, I, you didn't do I it. asked to verify identity and, and all that kind of stuff. No, I didn't. Um, yeah, of course. No. Cause like we, wow. we got to the discussion point, you know, and it was like, you know, I, I do need to verify, you know, who you are that, you know, Mr. Faceless profile approaching me on OnlyFans. Um, you know, so if I can get a social media profile, if I can get, you know, anything that tells me who you are, um, and complete yeah. silence after that. So we, uh, right. Well, we and send, and I should ask for a deposit um, right out of the gate then. On well, yeah, so that's, deposit so that is for one of the things like, yeah, I mean, you know, so, so that is one of the things like if I'm going to travel, we do a deposit ahead of time, one enough to pay for my round trip ticket. Um, and then, you know, discuss what's expected, discuss what the, you know, the arrangement is. Yeah. Um, some of that gets a little dicey because you can't, you know, I can't accept money for sex. That's problematic in many states in, in right. many ways. Um, but I can accept money in exchange for my and time. Federally. And federally. If. Yeah. Right. Um, you know, so I can, I can go and I can, you know, spend my time with somebody and be compensated for that time. But, you know, we can't, we can't approach the level where we're discussing or even alluding to sex for money. Yeah. Um, yeah. So, so that's, I guess the, the, I guess the question then is, um, because of that sort of loophole then, um, does that make it, it makes it more that, um, the discussion is about if I want to, then I will, and that it's not an expectation, and that and um, and if I choose not to, then that's also fine. Yeah, I mean, we're we're all adults, so realistically, if someone's approaching me to you know try and get me to go spend time with them for a weekend or for a night, that we all know exactly what their expectation is. Um, it is rare, and I, I have friends that that do this more often that. Um, you know, that that's, that that's not the case where the expectation is like, you know, gentleman needs a date to a party, wants some arm candy. Right. Um, and that's, that's what the deal is. Um, I, I have yeah. plenty of friends that do that. Um, I haven't hit that up that ask yet, but, um, you know, it's, it, I, we can make a general assumption that if somebody's approaching a sex worker, 
um, a content creator and asking them for, you know, hey, yeah. I want you to come up for the weekend and spend, you know, Friday night and Saturday night with me at my, you know, at my house. Like, we all know what the ask is there. Um, but as the commodity, you, um, doesn't that mean that you, you have to be wined and dined and not, not necessarily convinced, but that it had the, the conditions have to be right. Not that it's just um, pay to play. Is that fair? I mean... Pfizer invented Viagra for a reason. <laughs> fine, fine, fine. Um, so, the, the, in the other interview, they t you got you talked quite a bit about uh, your piercing. Um, they call it Prince Albert. I don't know why. Do you know why they call it a Prince Albert? I I don't remember the history behind that the the name. I had looked into it at one point. Um, I don't recall. I don't remember what the the background on it is. Uh, I just. I just did my research, and I, I the 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 most recent content. Uh, you don't necessarily have the ring in. Are you are you taking it out for content specifically? Is something going on? Did I just catch a wrong wave of content? Are you keeping it? What's what's going on? So I I, I take it in. I put it out. It's it varies on the day. It varies on my partner. Um, there are some people that are not comfortable with a three quarter inch metal ring being shoved inside of them. Um, there, you know, I I just filmed with somebody who I will not name because I, well, like, while well, I kiss and tell, I don't, you know, um, uh, bloopers and tell, um, I had this, this guy, yeah. very, very hot guy that I had, you know, I was, um, he was giving me a blowjob, Um, and I grabbed the back of his head and I stuffed him down on it. Like I do with a lot of people. Um, but the ring hit just right in the back of his throat that he threw up everywhere. Um, very unattractive, kind oh. of hilarious. Um, I felt bad. He felt bad. I we thought it was going to be worse. It was a thing. Um, so I took the ring out and then we reset and we started again. Um, there are people who've had okay. injuries because irresponsible tops use sure. the wrong kind of piercing. And so, you know, I've, I've had partners that say like, I really want to film with you, but you are not keeping that in. So I'll take it out. Um, yeah. And sometimes like for me, it's, it's a metal ring through my penis. Like, Sometimes that's going to chafe. Yeah. Sometimes that's going to like just not be comfortable. Um, so sometimes I'll take it out for me. Uh, but a lot of times like I'll film it. And so sometimes I'll film like back to back. Uh, one of the scenes that you probably saw on my Twitter that, that I just uh, released a teaser for. I fucked a guy, flipped over, he fucked me. I flipped him back over and I fucked him again. Um, I can always do one round with it. Usually the second round, it starts to get a little irritating um, so if I'm doing, okay. you know, a couple of, if, if I'm doing a couple scenes back to back, I'll take it out for the second one and the, the later ones. Um, I'm also multi-orgasmic. So if I'm going to do multiple rounds with the same person back to back, then I'll take it out, you know, part of the way through. Um, it just, it all depends. Yeah. Wait, what does it mean to be multi-orgasmic? So I can fuck somebody, come keep fucking them and then come again and then keep fucking them and then come again. Okay. Do you lose um, um, stiffen stiffency? Is that a word? That's not a word. No, generally it's volume. Does your dick that, lose consistency? Down. Um, okay. Yeah. No. No. Some. I mean, sometimes it will. Like it. A lot of it depends on the dynamic, the chemistry between the person. Um, but I, I filmed with yeah. um, Jason Luna back in in uh, March, and I went yeah. six rounds. We we did a quick water break between three and four, I think. Um, but I just, I just kept going. Um, and it was, I yeah. stayed hard the whole time. There was no kind of like, oh, I need to, I, like the, the, I need a break was I'm literally dehydrating cause I'm like, I sweat a lot. And, sure. um, so we stopped and grabbed some water and kept going, but it's, um, yeah, there's not, there's, I don't really have a refractory period, which is what that's called. Like where you have to like get soft and then get hard again. Um, some, yeah. you know, with some guys we'll stop, we'll cuddle. And then I'll be like, oh, well, it's hard again. Bend over. Um, Great. So, so the <laughs> the the piercing, um, the piercing is is irritating after a certain period of time. What's it, what's it, the benefit? What's the be. upside? It, it, is there is there an added pleasure the to your end on this thing? Oh yeah. It, so it changes the, it changes the, the sensations for both parties. Um, it's definitely something I recommend yeah. trying 
as a like for the for people that are that are bottoms, I definitely recommend trying a Prince Albert at least once. Um, it's a whole nother ball game. And so like for me, um, I love having it tugged on it, the, the sensation of, you know, pulling on that, that piece of skin that, um, is a, it's a, it's, it's a very heightened sensation for what you normally get. Um, cause you know, most guys like the, the underside of the penis, that, that area right there is, is highly sensitive. There's a, you know, very, um, you know, it's very pleasurable when you add the ability to tug on that or you add something moving there, it's, it's significantly, um, bigger, wow. uh, bigger sensation, more sensation. Um, the flip side, you know, for the, for the bottom, um, you know, most, most guys can, like, if you bottom before, you know, that, like you can feel there's a penis inside of you. It's a thing. Um, with the ring, you can feel exactly where that ring is inside of you. There's no like, Oh, you're so deep. It's like, I know precisely where that ring is. Um, so it, it adds yeah. a different level of pleasure to the bottom who's like now your attention is dragged straight into where that ring is and, and where it's moving. Um, you can track it the whole time it's in there. Um, so it's, it's a it different sensation funny, for both parties. Um, um, yeah. So the, um, so I guess I don't even understand the piercing. So I know that I know when you pre-explained it, it it's that you put they're putting they put a rod and they pierce you from underneath. Um, so they pierce yep. into the urethra. So are you you are you like a are you are you coming out of the 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 piercing hole? Is that a dumb question? It it does come out of both holes. Yeah. No shit. Yep. And then do you do you yeah. have any? Um, do you have any say in that? Like, do you have any control over that? How do I ask that? Not, not, it's not really something you can, can control. Um, it's, it really comes down to like, uh, this is going to sound like a f super nerdy, but it, it comes down to basic hydraulic principles. Um, if you take fluid, yeah, and you push I was going to say through, velocity. If you, if you take fluid and you push it through a, through a, a, a straw, right, it's going to come out the end of the straw. If you poke a hole at the bottom of the straw, it's going to come out of whichever hole you know, or both holes, but it's going to distribute the pressure across both of them. Um, so like when I, when I pee, I can so plug do one of the holes again? with my finger. Um, I shoot less far. That's about the only difference. Okay. But what does it do for the sensation? Is it, is it, is it a nice sensation coming out of two holes? Um, that you I didn't really anticipate. feel it. I don't really feel it coming out of, you know, like I don't really feel, you know, it's it spelling out of, out of one hole or the other. Um, you know, the, okay. since like the sensation for me is more centralized, you know, inside rather than, you know, where it's coming out. Um, Interesting. So it's kind of, you know, an uh, added I'm like. Just... I'm listening, sorry. Oh, yeah. So, it's, I mean, it's just kind of an, 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 like an extra place that it comes out. The, the only real change is that I don't, you know, I don't shoot as far as I used to. I'm not going to hit myself in the face with it um, when I come. It's, you know, it might make it to my chest and then which, there will be some oozing out on my hand. But Yeah, which that's also nice. Um, was, that a, was that a change that you knew was coming? Not to, not to be punful. It, I mean, it's a, it's a change I wasn't. Uh, uh, that I, like, I knew that it was, it was a thing. It was going to happen. It wasn't something that I really thought yeah. through. Um, you know, it's kind of like, yeah. you know, taking a leak. I, I didn't really think about the fact that, you know, I'm now going to have two streams that I have to worry about. Um, or if I have the ring in, then basic hydraulic principles say that water tracks the surface based off of surface tension. So, um, I now have a water wheel of doom when I try to go pee. Uh, so, Things like, you when know, the standing ring up to in, pee at a gas goes, station I bathroom. See. Yeah. Um, so that doesn't really exist anymore. Like urinals are sometimes okay. Um, at home, I just yeah. have to sit to pee uh, because I'm not. I love a sit to pee anyway. <laughs> yeah. So one of the things that you described when 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 they did it was they they put a rod in um, in your urethra and what's the, and then I heard you talk about another interview what, what's that pressure called what's there's like a there's a term for that um, that experience 
for like when they put the put the rod in. Yeah, you call that like sound rotting, and you already enjoy yeah, sound rotting. That ex- explain that. Yeah, to it's sa- sounding. Um, so sounding is uh, at its basis. You, there's a you take a, a rod, either metal. Some people use glass, which I do not encourage, um, or like silicone. So and uh, you insert it down the urethra, uh, and um, sometimes those those rods are short. Sometimes those are much longer, um, and it's. It gets its origin from a catheter, to be blunt. Um, sure. And so, like, the long silicone ones, I've got a set in the other room. Um, you stuff it down, and, like, you can put it all the way in, and it gets all the way to your bladder. Um, the the metal ones, it's um, similar to a, a urethral dilator, so it stretches the urethra out. Um, and, yeah. you know, so you just metal rod in, kind of stretch things out a little bit, wiggle it around. You can hit the prostate if you're, you know, using the right type. Um, and so that's, that's really all it is to, you know, for the piercing is they take a, it's, it's a, you know, it's a rod, it's just hollow and they stuff it in there and then they pierce into that rod so that they don't, you know, poke through the other side. Yeah. But the, so the, uh, I wanted to talk about the pleasurable version of what you're talking about and where, how do you discover yeah. that? And I mean, the, I think the, I think that there's a couple of things that are horrifying to, to people in general and men, um, from being a kid. And number one is like, uh, anything happening to your eyeball. And then the other one is anything going into your pee hole. So how do you get to the place where you're like, this, it seems like an experimental area. Um, did it happen sort of like naturally through research? Like, how does that happen? And, and you have paraphernalia. So this is a thing that you're involved in, um, often. Yeah. So the internet's a magical thing. Um, I, <laughs> I have, I have discovered most of my kinks and fetishes either through the internet or through friends, um, or playmates. And, uh, yeah. so sounding is one of those where I, I saw it on the internet and I went, huh, that's interesting. And then I saw on one of my favorite, you know, websites when I was, I think I was shopping for a cock ring at the time. Um, I was, and I saw like they had a cheap set of, of, um, you know, uh, silicone sounds. And I was like, well, you know, that might be, it's cheap. It's something, you know, I can give it a shot, see if I like it. It's, I saw it, but it looked kind of fun. Um, and then, you know, so you, you buy the cheap version and you're like, okay, you know, maybe this is something that's for me. And so you buy the more expensive version and, you know, so now I've got like a 14 piece metal set with a whole bunch of different sizes and you can graduate up and they're like that long and you like a butcher. Yeah. So you, you, you just put a little bit more money into your hobby and, you know, find out what you like and what you don't. And, um, yeah. Explain, like, like describe the sensation then. Um, so it's, again, it's one of those things where like you can feel exactly where the end is, you know, it's, it's, it is stretching your, your, your urethra out. So it's, you know, you can feel that expand as it goes in. Um, but then like it, when you go in far enough, you actually get to the point where, um, uh, cause the prostate abuts the, uh, urethra. And so like when you get to the point that you actually stimulate that, that's, it's very similar to if, you know, if you're using a prostate stimulator or somebody reaches in, you know, inside and grabs a hold of your prostate, um, it's that same kind of sensation where you're like, oh, that's, that's there. Um, and so you can, you know, self-stimulate the prostate that way. Um, and then coming while sounding is possible. It's, it, yeah, it's possible. Um, no, it's possible. It's, um, depending on the level that you're at and, you know, the size of the sound that you're using and what you're used to or not. Um, you know, if you're like, I would not use, I would not use the largest sound that I'm comfortable with to make myself come. Um, because then that, that can, can cause like a back pressure and you can get some complications. They're not, ser- they're not like that serious, but, um, th- I, you know, like I'll stretch using, you know, different soundings to the sound rods to the point that I'm comfortable with. And then, you know, back down a couple if I want to keep it in while I come. I don't typically do that just because that's not my, my particular style. Um, I use the sounding rods to pleasure myself to, to kind of self-stimulate and then I'll pull it out and I'll finish, you know, jerking off. Um, but you certainly can do it 
you just want to, you know, be a couple sizes down. So there's some room for your, your urethra to stretch around the rod and allow the fluid to pass. Interesting. Um, I should have asked this earlier. Um, I have so many more questions. The first time, the first time you do it, um, is it like, I don't want to use horrifying, but again, I'm still stuck at horrifying. It's, um, it's new. It's different. It's, um, depends on you know it depends on how much how how much it interests you how much you want to try new things um yeah you know if if you're not an adventurous person and you're like oh my god why am i doing this then it's not going to be as uh, it's not going to be as fun it's not it's going to be you know a little bit more horrifying but if you're adventurous and you're like i want to yeah. you know i want to see what this is all about like it's it's exciting it's you know interesting it's um you know it's it's a different style of pleasure so you know it's like for me, that in and of, in and of itself is pleasurable. Like finding finding new things that, that I cause see. me pleasure. That's fair. Um, is it more of a solo thing, or is this or is this a, um, a play with others thing? For me, it's more of a solo thing. There are two people that I could think of names off the top of my head who I would allow to sound me. Um, it yeah. it's, that's one of those things that requires a level of trust and a level of intimacy um that's yeah. not you know just like oh we're gonna go hook up like mm, if i'm gonna go hook up with someone they're not sticking anything inside of me you know it's not inside of my my dick yeah, yeah, um yeah. but if you know if it's yeah. you know one of my friends who i've got a friend that i let him i let him you know tie me down to his bed stick an um east end kid on me and crank it all the way up loved it i'd let yeah. him sound me um but it's but that's like that's the level of trust we're at where you know because you are sticking something inside of a place that's arguably not intended to have things stuck inside of it. <laughs> yeah. Well, then. So then, do you have any content with it? And then, have you seen any content with like, I don't want to call it Chinese finger sound, but like, um, where it's like yes. double sided sound? Has, has, has this content exi exist? Yeah. Yeah. The content's right. out I'll there. I'll leave it there. Um, um, yep. You have you you got to go train, and we want to get you up to two twenty because that'll that'll um th like each time you you make these these uh this headway, I think it'll be interesting for your content and for us the the viewer. Um, how do we find you? How do we follow you? How do we? Uh, I can't put links in the comments anymore because it gets us banned. So let's say them um, of how we can get you money and how we can pay for your content. Yeah, so the easiest way is to look me up on Instagram or Twitter. Instagram is Boston Jock. Twitter's Boston Jock Trickle. Boston Jock Triple X, if I can speak. Um, both of those profiles have a link that's it's a MySlink app. Um, it's myslink.app slash Boston Jock. It's in the profiles. That has literally everything. It will bring up this little pop up that shows my OnlyFans, my Just for Fans, my For My Fans, my Amazon wish list, my Cash app. Uh, everything is in there. Um, and so, you know, it's the easiest way jump on Instagram, jump on Twitter. You know, Instagram again is Boston Jock. Twitter's Boston Jock triple X, triple X. And, um, that's, that's the best way to get me. Perfect. Um, thank you for doing this. Um, thank you for your time. Um, and, uh, it's sexy people podcast. We have a new episode dropping every Monday. This will be this Monday. Uh, we'll break up into, uh, into content. We have it on YouTube. We're on Google play. We're on iTunes, wherever you are. We are also there. Um, check out our content on Instagram. Peace at pod. Um, and then please follow this this gentleman. I've many. I have to interview you like three more times. I have many more questions to ask you. I appreciate your time. Perfect. I appreciate you being here. Um, and thank you so much. Hey, thank you. Thank you for having me. Ken, thank you.